Welcome to Everlasting Love. My name is Patricia King, and I'm glad that you've joined us for today's program. We have a special guest with us, Dennis Walker, who's the apostolic leader of Dunamis Ministries. And Dennis, it's wonderful to have you with us. And you're also a channel host with XP Media, and That's we right. enjoy your input. You know, your word goes all over the world into the nations, and people enjoy you everywhere. You're a, not only an apostle, but you're, you're a prophet, a seer. Mm -hmm. in particular so you get a lot of visions and mm -hmm. revelations and and we're going to talk about one of these encounters today because the Lord has actually downloaded a special insight uh, for you to give to the body and so uh, this is going to be an exciting message for believers and it's about a garden in heaven yeah. and so can you share a, a little bit about this encounter with us sure uh, I was in England in Rochdale, England, and I was after a meeting staying with a pastor in his home, and I was down in his living room sleeping on the hide of bed, and uh, <laughs> like normal, I at the end of a busy day, I took time out to get into heaven, to see into third heaven, and just spend some time with the Lord, and I'm there, and the Lord came to me again in this vision, and then the Lord asked me a question I'd never heard before, and the question was, what if I've given every believer a garden? in heaven, a garden like the Garden of Eden, and that they have to care for like Adam and Eve had to care right. for their garden. What so. if? I just want to backtrack a little while because you said, as normal, at the end of a busy day, I just sure. went up into heaven. <laughs> now, for some of our viewers, that's going to be like, hello, what, what does he mean by that? Yeah. And um, so do believers have access, do all believers have access into the heavens? Because a lot of people think, you know, well, you know, I'm still on the earth, I haven't died, how can I be in heaven when I'm still sure. in earth? Can you explain those well, dynamics? Every believer has a handwritten invitation in Colossians 3, 1 and 2, to seek heaven and to find heaven. You know, Jesus right. said, whatever you seek, you'll find. And so the command is, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So we have an invitation, not just an invitation, but a command right. to seek third heaven experiences. You exactly. know, I really believe Paul had many of these. He yes. only writes about one, but then even in that same book in 2 Corinthians, he writes, we no longer look at the things that are seen, right? but the things that so are unseen. Unseen, yeah. So he's having ongoing, you know, these ongoing encounters. And that's yeah. what the Lord led me into. Was and I believe it's to be normal for I, every believer. Absolutely. I had a 30-day encounter with the Holy Spirit a number of years ago where he actually, through dictation really, that's the way I describe it anyways, yeah. gave me insights for every believer that we have access into that glory realm, into the heavenlies, yeah. and that by faith we can access those realms. And of course we have that in our glory school now, um, which is a, um, you know, 16 lessons mm -hmm. uh, that walk people through the scriptures and practically show them how they can step into those encounters. Yeah. And so we're finding more and more that this is becoming more and more normal for believers because God expects that. He never meant Christians to just sit inside of a, a church building listening to a message and some announcements, giving yeah. an offering and then leaving. Right. I mean, we're supposed to have a vibrant walk with God even as Jesus did. Yeah. And Jesus was obviously living out of the heavens because he said, I only do the things I see my father That's do. Right. And, and his father is in heaven. Yeah. And he said to us, the works that I do, you'll do. Exactly. And you're not going to do those without this heavenly connection to do them like he did them. I remember years ago, Bob Jones, a prophet that we both know, yeah. um, and he's in his 80s now, but probably one of the most profound seer prophets of our day. Yeah. And I remember when he told me, you know, he says, I have, well, he, he, he called them his raptures where he goes into the spirit, into the heavenly places. Yeah. So I have my raptures every day, mm -hmm. every day. Amen. And that's kind of what you were saying. Yeah. I, don't, I don't finish a busy day without accessing my daddy's, my daddy's wow. dwelling place. Yeah. I love that. And that's my relationship. How, yeah. I don't know how I could live and do the things I do yeah. without that kind of connection. No, because you have ministry all over the world. Yeah. You do crusades and you plant churches and strengthen the body and yeah. lead an apostolic movement. I mean, it's, it's awesome. But you do that because you know your Heavenly Father. Yep. Amen. Strengthens me and all the rest. Okay, so you're having one of these raptures? Yeah, <laughs> or yeah one of these. right. Yeah, and, and the Lord you, began to talk to me about a garden. And he said, what if I've given a garden to every believer? And I'm thinking, wow, cool. And he said, would you like to see your garden? And, you know, well, yeah, of course. 
And so all of a sudden, I'm just absolutely transported into this garden, lush green garden with a wall around it, huge place, not just a small little walled garden, but a, like an estate with a big wall around wow. it. And then the Lord said, now, the problem is this is your garden and you need to care for it like Adam and Eve cared for their garden. And he began to show me things that were out of order, things that needed to be ordered and plants that were there that shouldn't have been there and, you know, things that needed to happen. He showed me my walls. We, we walked around some of the part of the walls of my garden and there were gaps in the walls and parts where there were breaches in the walls. Now, we know that in heaven, everything's perfect. Yeah. So there's no breaches in the walls in heaven. But he was showing you, was it a parallel of your life in the earth or of your, your realm of fruitfulness in the earth? What, what was he, he showing you as far as the brokenness and the things that weren't quite right in the weeds and stuff yeah. like that? Well, you know, I, I assumed this was in third heaven. But later, I think it must have been like three or four weeks later after I've had all these experiences and now been working in my garden and doing some things to change things, and then the Lord one day asked me, well, where is your garden exactly? And I'm thinking, well, you said heaven. And he said, but where can, and then he began to ask me, can there be this kind of disorder in third heaven? And it dawned on me, no, there can't be. And he said, your garden is in second heaven. Wow. Now again, for our viewers, that might be a strange terminology. And yeah. we know that second heaven is not a scriptural term, but third heaven is. That's right. <laughs> and then we can deduce from that that there's a first and a second. Exactly. There must be a first and a, and a second. So yeah. a, lot of, a lot of theologians believe, especially warfare theologians, believe that the second heaven is a place where Satan's hierarchy is set up, um, which there is some yeah. of his hierarchy there because obviously he's not in the third heaven. He got booted out of God's place right. of abode. But that second heaven realm is what believers are to own. Right? right? So it's a place where we're to fill it with the knowledge of the glory of God. Yeah. There's angels in that realm as well, right. God's angels. Yeah. And, um, and, and there's things to overcome and things to put into order. Yeah. And in, a, in, in the book of Ephesians, it actually is a letter to believers to show us how to rule and reign in those realms. That's right. Well, you know, the, the Word of God says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities yeah. and powers and rulers of darkness in Heavenly, heavenly places. places. I'll guarantee you those places are not in third heaven. Right, that's right. And so what I began to understand was where I had learned that the enemy abides, and you know, I'd even heard people say, never, don't go there. I know. And, I've heard uh, that too. That's ridiculous. That isn't is it? ridiculous because it doesn't belong to him. It doesn't belong to him. I said, oh, that's enemy. a demonic realm. But I thought, yeah. well, you know, the earthly realm is full of demons too, but that's does right. that keep believers from operating in the earthly of realm? Or we're to conquer it. Yeah, that's right. Light into the darkness. And I actually believe that the tops of the mountains of government and all these Come different on. places are in Come second on. heaven. Yeah. And that we're actually called to possess the gates of the enemy. Yeah. And so the Lord began to show me, by the way, when I began to look at how much work my garden needed, I began to get a little tired just thinking <laughs> about it. But then the Lord spoke to me and said, you don't work in this garden by the sweat of your brow. Right. He said that Adam and Eve did not work by they the sweat of not. their brow. No. There were no hose and rakes in the garden. Yeah. And he, he said that they worked by the creative word. Yeah. And he said, now begin to speak over your walls and speak over your garden for wow. things to change. And I began to do that. And my garden began to be transformed as I would prophesy over my garden wow. and speak over my garden. And then I began to change. My, I, you know, this was an experience that I had on a trip away from home. I got back home and my wife recognized I'd had some experience that I hadn't told her. And she said, you're different. What's happened to you? And so I began to tell her about my garden experience. And she began to go to her garden and see things. And then I, I began to understand that God has a plan for the retaking of second heaven that starts with us caring for what really belongs to us. Come on. And that that actually creates the character necessary for us to be able to carry l even later more authority. Wow. Can I ask you some practical questions sure. about your garden? Okay, so the Lord shows you in the spirit, he shows you a garden with your name on it. It's your, your garden. Right. It's got walls, it's got maybe flowers, trees. Everything, um, spring, river. Beautiful. So now, when you start releasing the word over your garden, did he show you symbolically like this river means this practical thing in your life or this, this tree means this practical thing? Like was there like, um, like your family life? Was it part of your garden? Was your, was your local church part of your garden? Was your finance part of your garden? Like 
Did, did he show you specifically, or did you just nebulously proclaim words over the garden in general? What he told me was that everything that I do in my garden will have an impact on earth, and things that I do on earth will have an impact on my garden. Wow. And he never actually, like, showed me this represents this, or, right. you know, but he said, the more you do in your garden, uh, I'll, I'll give you one, one small example. Okay. I saw crabgrass in my garden, and the Lord said, this has no place here. You need to tell it to go. And then he began to say, and when you tell it to go, you'll find you're less crabby on earth. Wow. <laughs> and I don't know if he was just playing with me or what, because I've learned that the Lord has a sense of humor. Uh, he's the inventor of humor. And uh, <laughs> so uh, I began to see that I was, as I would change things, oh, I'll give you another good one. When I spoke over my walls to be repaired mm -hmm. and uh, my gate to be rehung, right. All of a sudden, a lot of the internal mental battles that I would have, especially after glorious times, I'd be right. in meetings that were just glorious, people healed, people born again, things happened. And then after that, I would be under the onslaught of the enemy. I would right. just be a attacked in my mind, in my thinking, my emotions. That happens a lot to it, people, doesn't it? There's it does. like a counterattack after yeah. a victory. Well, that ended wow. when I repaired my walls. And I, I would come away from meetings thinking, wow, this is different. I don't feel and so you just spoke into the vision like, okay, walls be repaired, gate be rehung. And as a seer, you started to see these things come into place. Yeah. And as they came into place in the spirit, in the vision, then they manifest in these areas in your life. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I believe it's because second heaven has a governmental mm -hmm. role over first heaven. First heaven is the physical universe. Right. See, here, here's what I become aware of after all of these experiences and knowing second heaven and having had many experiences in third heaven, is I believe that the three heavens were originally created to be joined together in one, right. and that they were only fractured through two rebellious and sinful events right. in prehistory. Yeah. One was rebellion of the angels, mm -hmm. and the next was the rebellion Iron of man. man. And each time heaven was fractured, there was a casting down. Uh, Satan was cast out of third heaven, and that meant now there's a separation that's typified by a veil mm -hmm. in the tabernacle. There's a separation between third heaven and the rest of creation. But first and second were still together in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were placed there because there were heavenly things and earthly things together in that place. Right. And then that became separated again when there was another casting down where they were cast out of the garden. And they were cast to be of the earth earthy. Wow. And so then the second chaotic event, second fracture happened. And I, I really believe that that's what God is so putting back together today. And I almost think that that's why there's two comings of the Lord to deal with these two events and that he's joined third heaven back to the rest of creation through the blood of Jesus on the cross. Right. And he's about to take that other separation between right. second heaven and first heaven away with his next coming. Wonderful. And uh, it's just so many different things that are going on. I'm, I'm seeing things that the gospel of the kingdom makes more sense to me now than right. ever before. Right. It's, it's all about I the I remember coming. being in a session where you were preaching this message. It was so powerful. It was electrifying. And many people came forth to get prayer that day and yeah. really felt the power of God impact them. And I want that for our viewers. So after mm -hmm. we come back from the break, I want you to minister to our viewers. I will do that. Okay. Are you called to God's media army? Do you want to be a filmmaker? Filmmaker. Filmmaker. And start shooting, directing, and editing films today. 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 XP Filmmaking Bootcamp is a hands-on workshop on the art and craft of filmmaking. Learn on-set production techniques straight from industry professionals. Study the language of cinema and the tools of digital filmmaking. In a hands-on production environment. This is a full-blown movie shoot. We take the class through pre-production, casting, location scouting, film shoot, and the editing of a live-action short film. With everyone participating in every aspect of the production process. Students learn fundamental digital filmmaking skills using professional cameras, lighting, and editing equipment. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for the most challenging and rewarding experience of your life. XP Filmmaking Bootcamp. Filmmaking Bootcamp. Filmmaking Bootcamp. Practical training for God's media army. Purchase the third edition of Decree and see your life transformed by the spoken word of God. Receive His promises today. 
Call 866-980-5464 or visit xpministries.com to order now. So Dennis, um, this whole revelation about your garden is actually, it, it seems to me that the Lord was imparting to you um, a, an awakening of your ability to create with him. Yeah. Because he was showing you things that, that weren't quite where they could be in fullness and gave you the invitation to create uh, with him something that was supposed to be. Yeah. And so every believer has the ability to create because we are made in the image of God. Yeah. And, uh, but we, we need it stirred up. You know, yeah. We need it to be awakened within us. And that's what happened with you. And now you're helping people all mm -hmm. over the world mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Share a little bit more about this whole act of creating. Well, I, I really believe that God is wanting to create within us the character and all of the things that we need for having a, just a tremendous impact on the earth in the future. You know, Jesus said, the works I do, you'll do. But we don't just need power, we need the character right. to carry that as well. And I think that comes as you spend time working in your garden and creating new things there. You're, you're taking the dominion and the authority over an area that has influence in all of your earthly life. I believe that as I create new things in my garden, I become a different person. Right. My, my earthly life is transformed and changed. Uh, okay, this was so, what my wife saw. So you were sharing um, that you saw your garden and some things were not right. Like for example, the Lord wanted you to get rid of the crab grass. Right. <laughs> he yep. wanted you to repair the walls and hang the gates. Mm -hmm. And so those are all fix ups. That's all right. repairs. But then you also created things that weren't there before because yeah. I know the word says call those things that are not as sure. though they are. So you called into existence things that were never in yeah. your life before? I had a, um, uh, I did not have a river in my garden at first, but the Lord said, you know, you can have one, just call it in. And so I called in a river and it immediately mountains sprung up, a waterfall appeared and the river came into my garden. Wow. And it was for the refreshing of my life and those around me that there'd be this flow of living water that would flow through me. And you started noticing in the natural, af after you called your river into being, you started noticing in the natural a new level of refreshment to yourself and yeah. others. Yeah. You know what I, I think people haven't really understood is that there's so much of second heaven that governs our life today. Do you know that Jesus had a second heaven experience while he was on earth? Right, he did. He was caught up to yes. a high mountain and shown all of the nations of the yeah. earth. And there's no high mountain here on earth right, that, can that see will it do all. that. Yeah. So he was caught up to a second heaven peak right. where the enemy was governing things on earth. And he offered that he would give him this authority if Jesus would bow down. We right. know Jesus did not bow down. But before he was caught up, he said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, therefore go. Right. And so we know that he ended up with all of that authority. Yes. And now he's wanting to give it to us. You know, Colossians 1.16, uh, that he created these things. They're, they're for him, they're by him, and they're for him. Right. All of these levels of authority, dominions, thrones, principalities, and powers yes. by him. It's awesome. I love the book of Ephesians, too, where it talks about, like, you know, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. We Absolutely. know that he is at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. And that all the things are under his feet, which means they're under ours. That's right. Everything. And that's first, second, all the way to the throne. Everything. The authority yeah. has been given to us in Christ to bring those things in submission. Yeah. And when he died on the cross and went and paid the price for our sin, mm -hmm. he took the keys of death and of hell. Therefore, all authority from the lowest parts of the earth and all the overlaying realms over the, the natural, all the overlaying spirit realms, all the way to the highest heaven belong to him. And therefore, that belongs to us. That's right. It's amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> and you, you know what? Uh, I believe that the enemy continues to offer to people today the same thing. Be, he doesn't own it, but he's right. occupying. Yeah, he's, he's a liar. That's right. And he occupies this area, and he offers to people, if you'll bow down to me, I'll give you wealth, and I'll give you fame, I'll bring you to the top of your profession, I'll make you famous. And right. So the rulers and the famous and, the, and the, the wealthy of the earth have been these people who are corrupted by the worship of one who is corrupt. Right. That's so true. And... What I believe is that today, God is about to replace and dispossess the enemy from those high places and the people who have been worshiping him. Right. That he's, 
He's going to dispossess those things and give it to his children. Yes. That before the last and great day Amen. of the Lord, the children of God are going to rise like the sun and shine with the glory of God as a last day witness to the greatness of God. Awesome. I just, it's so exciting what he's doing right now. And that in our process of getting there, it shapes character. Right. Isn't that amazing? That we will have the care to, care, to carry what he we'll, wants to give us. We will look like Jesus, and Amen. that's so important. Isn't it? It's so important because yeah. we, we can have gifts, we can have talent, we can have money, we can have dreams, visions, all of that. But if we don't have character, if we don't yeah. have righteous character like Jesus had, yep. you know, we don't really have anything, yeah. you know. And even on the news these days, they're showing even, you know, religious institutions that, that the world looks upon as Christians. Mm -hmm. and see that they've been abusing children and, oh. you know, all kinds of dishonest things going on. These things ought not to be That's right. named amongst the people of God, and we have to clean up our garden. Well, <laughs> anytime you have religion that has no relationship with the Lord, you're not close to Him, you're not following Him, right. you're not living in the things that He's opened up for you, you're going to have corruption come right. into a religious field. And uh, I just believe this is so important for everyone. To understand you have a garden that belongs to you and whatever happens in that garden will make an impact on your life here on earth. Right. And it's up to you. That God yes. has given you the way to come into this to begin yeah. to steward your garden. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that could be our personal garden. It could be the garden of our home, yeah. garden of our ministry, the garden of our business. Yeah. Because any realm of influence, we have the power in God to create something beautiful, Absolutely. something holy, something that yeah. is in divine order. And you're, you're actually touching a key because the key is that there are these different levels, dominions, thrones, principalities, and powers, all are talking about levels of authority. And I believe that there's, in second heaven, dominion over cities, over nations, over areas, geographical yeah. areas. And don't, don't aspire to those if you've got a dirty garden. Right, exactly. You know, but come in and care for your garden, and then let the Lord say, you've been faithful in small things, I'm going to make and, you... And no garden is beautiful, even in the natural, if it's overrun by That's thorns right. and thistles and weeds and... Or dries and, up. Or dries up. Yeah. No garden is beautiful. You want it to be beautiful. If you have a garden, you want it to be beautiful. Yeah. Dennis, can I ask you to minister to our viewers? Sure. Because all of them have the same ability that you did to call mm -hmm. forth good things in their garden. And maybe mm -hmm. you could give some tools. I know probably proclaiming the word is one, but maybe you have other keys, little tools that they can mm -hmm. have to work their garden. Sure. Well, you know, first thing is, I believe that you have to start by seeking experiences with Jesus in third heaven. You can't, I don't think you can come into your garden successfully trying to battle your way up from first heaven. Right. I think that your access is granted from, from third heaven. Amen. That's because, what the Bible says. Isn't it? <laughs> and that, that gives you the authority and the light and the glory, and you won't come in battling demons right. when you come from third, a third heaven encounter. You'll come in with the light, and the, the, dem, the demonic forces will scatter like cockroaches when you turn right. on the light Right. when you come from that direction. Right. And I have never had any real battle as right. I've come into these areas because I always came out of a third heaven encounter with the Lord. Yeah, and when you live out of the third heaven, everything's under your feet. So it's like, you know, the enemy can't be there. He, That's like, right. He's, he's, he's not allowed in. So seek third heaven okay. and then ask the Lord, once you're having some third heaven encounters, ask the Lord, show me my garden. Mm -hmm. And then he'll show you that you are a walled garden yeah. and that that garden is a garden of his delights. And it's all about bringing you into a whole new level of intimacy with Him. And at the same time that it shapes and forms your whole life on earth and in heaven. Beautiful. To be more like Him. And um, uh, if you really want nuts and bolts of this, ask Jesus to open up your eyes and ears. The material that you have in your bookstore for you know, opening and activation mm -hmm. of the spiritual senses is key. That's mm -hmm. key to it. You know, get that material, study that, and find out that you have five spiritual senses, not just five natural, that a, a full living Christian has 10 senses right. wow. and five spiritual and five natural. Get them all wow. working. Yeah, come on. And so if I were to help minister to people right now, it's just a prayer of impartation for the activation of your spiritual senses so that you'll know Jesus to a new level, that you'll know your life in third heaven. I believe if you're born again, mm -hmm. you're already living in third heaven right. in the spirit. And that you just need to wake up and smell the 
celestial coffee. Come on. <laughs> well, we have, and I love coffee, and heavenly coffee has to be the best, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can you just look into your camera now with the one minute that we have sure. left right. and just proclaim a blessing over the people yeah. of God so that Whoa. they can connect with their garden? And I just got a word of knowledge for somebody. I'll get that awesome. at the end, hopefully. Okay. But listen, I right now, I proclaim over you the activation of your spiritual senses, eyes and ears, spiritual sense of taste, touch, and smell for you to know Jesus and for you to catch the initiatives of heaven and do the works of Jesus here on earth. And I proclaim you're going to know heaven and that he's going to take you into knowing your garden in second heaven and that you're going to dispossess the enemy from control and authority over your life through this garden that he's had free reign in. You're no longer going to give him free reign. You're going to repair your walls and reset your gates. And I proclaim your life is about to take on a whole new level of intimacy with Jesus and life in God. Word of knowledge, real quick. Anybody that's having a, a legal battle for finances, God says he's going to intervene. Go ahead. <laughs> Are you called to God's media army? Do you want to be a filmmaker? Filmmaker. Filmmaker. And start shooting, directing, and editing films today. 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 XP Filmmaking Bootcamp is a hands-on workshop on the art and craft of filmmaking. Learn on-set production techniques straight from industry professionals. Study the language of cinema and the tools of digital filmmaking. In a hands-on production environment. This is a full-blown movie shoot. We take the class through pre-production, casting, location scouting, film shoot, and the editing of a live action short film. With everyone participating in every aspect of the production process. Students learn fundamental digital filmmaking skills using professional cameras, lighting, and editing equipment. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for the most challenging and rewarding experience of your life. XP Filmmaking Bootcamp. Filmmaking Bootcamp. Filmmaking Bootcamp. Practical training for God's media army. Purchase the third edition of Decree and see your life transformed by the spoken word of God. Receive His promises today. Call 866-980-5464 or visit xpministries.com to order now. Become a Breaker Team Partner today. Go online to xpministries.com.